What's going on YouTube? It's your boy HD and I'm back with another episode of Techno Chatter today. Uh, hey guys, shout out to all the new subscribers, old subscribers, and people that just be watching. Shout out to y'all because y'all still help my analytics. Um, like I said, you see what it is, textureconsulting.com. Check us out guys. We're always available to help you all. Is it worth it to get a master's degree in tech? And we're going to have an honest conversation and we're just going to talk about it. We're just going to talk about it. Like, what's Khalid say? Can I just talk? But honestly, we're gonna talk about this, guys. So, I got a couple of stats. Don't know how up to date they are, but here they are. So, for the average master's degree in tech, like master's technology management, it's an average salary of 127K. Now, regardless of what you say, six figures still six figures. Now, um, if I have after I get into that, then we'll talk about like the unemployment rates. Uh, I have an article right here from Forbes. Link is in the description. It says that computer-based occupations um, unemployment rates were around 2.5% in May, and actually they've gotten better since then. While everyone else's unemployment rate was around 13.5%. And that's just a computer-based one. Now, if we were to go off of uh, cybersecurity unemployment rate, as you guys know, they still, you know, say is zero percent. I'm under the assumption that uh, it's between zero and one percent. I have a link in the description for that link. Now, I mean, that was last year, but forecasting, I'm gonna say between like zero to one percent. But hearing those numbers, guys, I'm pretty sure you probably say, "Hmm, might be worth it." Who knows? Well, let's let's get into it a little bit more. Like we're talking about like a this is just a master's of technology management. I'm just gonna talk about that because that's what I have. I have a master's of technology management. Uh, normally the curriculum has to do with like enterprise architecture, leadership classes, processes, um, heavily, heavily focus on like group assignments, uh, some st statistics classes, um, but heavily focuses on you doing group assignments uh, because being in a management type role, you're gonna have to manage egos and manage people and work with different departments to get jobs done. And that's what grad school is meant to show you. I also would say that I feel like grad school is a little bit more hands-on, a little bit more beneficial to me than actual bachelors. One, because while I was in grad school, I was already in the workforce. So I was able to apply stuff that I learned in school at work. Now, this is not the case for everybody because everybody does not have a job in their desired field when they're in grad school. So I totally understand. That being said, I feel like it was a benefit. I know for a fact uh, you have people with the same thing, they get like the Masters of Cybersecurity, uh, maybe get a Masters of Network, Networking, anything probably much with a Masters that has to do with technology, uh, we'll stand to get you paid. Um, one of the reasons is I think uh, companies feel inclined to say, okay, this person got a Masters, they spent all this on school, so we're inclined to pay them a certain amount of money over people who didn't. Well, I can't really say that, but for the most part, when you have a master's, some companies tend to take care of you. So that is a thing in my, is it actually worth it to get a master's in tech? Depends on who you ask. I know I got mine because I was at a job to where I wasn't doing anything every day. And I felt like I needed to do something. So I was like, why not go back to school and get a master's? It can only benefit me anyways. So that's why, because I had actually been a stickler for saying I wasn't going back to school. After I got a bachelor's, I was like, I'm not going back to school. But I found out, you know, being black in tech, I had to be a certain level sometimes to actually even get looked at, honestly. Honest to God, true. But now, you know, that was what, I finished that program, what, two years ago, four years ago when I think I applied. So I said that to say this, now we've transitioned to where companies care more about what can you do for me? Can you do the job? They're not harping on you to be able to actually have to have degrees or, you know, a master's degree. So it might not be as beneficial to somebody now to go get that debt and get a master's degree. You might be better off just, you know, working your way up, networking. And um, some companies, they have leadership courses and other courses and things that'll let you like be a manager or whatever you're trying to do. So in that hand, it's not worth it. I, I'm honestly, I mean, like I said, I went to school. I'll tell people, if you can do the job you want to do without going to school, don't go to school. 
because sometimes you're not being taught what you need to learn in order to be successful in the work. Another thing about uh, master's degrees that does help out is uh, alumni, different people uh, when you do get your master's. It helps you, depending on the university you go to, they say, oh, they have a good program and a lot of people might hire you off the strength of you completed your master's. A lot of people know that master's are different than bachelor's and know that they're a little bit more hands-on. They do prepare you a little bit more for work because with a master's, it's not a lot of fluff. You literally get in and take classes you actually need. Like, it was imperative that I took that class, the leadership class especially, that was about emotional intelligence for me. That's a EQ. I recommend a lot of people take classes on EQ or read books on EQ. Um, also, this will stick out in the interview, guys. If you ever mention EQ in an interview, you'll be surprised how you stand out. There's not too many people that even know what EQ stands for stands for emotional intelligence. I feel like that class was vital for me because it helped me realize it's a right and the wrong way to get what I need to get out of my you know, companions, um, my contemporaries. It's a right and the wrong way. Uh, I'll give you an example. If I was a manager and I came to somebody all the time, I'd like, man, you can't do nothing right. Like, why are we paying you? I'm not going, they're not going to yield a good performance for me because of the way that I interact. Now, if I come and sit down with them and say, hey, you're more effective when you do things this way. And I say, you're least effective when you do it like this. I told them they're good at doing something and then something makes them do things not as good as when they're most effective. That's how you uh, effectively communicate with somebody. And I know that kind of got off of what this video is about, but I think that's important for anybody to know. If you got to this part of this video, Write that down. But the courses I took in the master's class, I feel like helped me out because I understand a lot more, uh, like I said, enterprise architecture. When I brought up in one of my past videos about maturity levels, that was things that we had tests on and we worked on in class because that's very important in an environment you just don't know. You're able to spot that, okay, this is why it's happening. This is what they're trying to do. This is why they're trying to push this out. They need to do a refresh. All that stuff is super important. Um, even I think when it comes to like people doing project management, and the different ways that they can do project management, all the stuff where it comes in handy. So while I won't necessarily say, you know, you need a master's because like a lot of people I work with, they don't have no master's. They got the best thing, experience. If you got experience, it trumps a degree. I mean, I'm just telling you, that's what it is. It trumps a degree. But a degree can help, especially if you're young. Like most of my jobs, I was always the youngest person. So getting um, some of that knowledge, like my professors, like most of your professors, your master's classes have ran their own business, been managers, possibly been C-level execs. They have a lot of knowledge. You just soak, soak up as much as you can from them and apply it to what job. I don't care if you're working at McDonald's. Apply what you learn. You'll be surprised. You'll see the difference in you and everybody else. And your bosses will too. And I know somebody's like, why well, try that hard at McDonald's? It's, it's the principle. If you can treat a regular job like it's a big time job, when you get the big time job, you're gonna already know how to act. A lot of times people get some of these big time jobs and they don't know how to act right because they didn't do it in their smaller jobs. They didn't care, they didn't try hard at the smaller jobs. So even though they may want to do it, they're not used to doing it. And you think the master's is useful. If I think a master's is useful in tech, I wanna say yes, but I'm gonna say you don't have to get one. You don't have to get one uh, stay at your job. And also, you can go to school, work, and let the company pay for your education. That's one of the best ways because we know that right now they don't really make schools have like a cutoff on like what they charge on tuition. So they're making a lot of money and a lot of it's not yielding over a good return of investment for the students. So look into that. Like I said, one of the biggest things you still can do always is networking. A master's is going to teach you like more soft skills and some technical skills, but you're still going to be better off also learning on your own, always doing continuous improvement, learning on your own. Cause that's always going to help you stand out at work because you'll find people are not trying to get better. They just come, they do their job and they go home and they get left behind. You don't want to get left behind. You want to go past everybody else. You want to look at the trends and be prepared for what's coming to the next five, 10, 15 years. So, Hey guys, that's been my video on this. Hey, remember, I appreciate all that you guys do and thank you for checking out techno chatter. It's your boy and I'm out.